Hi, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Christy. And I'm Sharla. We are hoping that by the end of today's video, we not only have you craving a nice warm bowl of comforting soup, mm -hmm. but we have shown you how easy it can be to actually make a bunch of soups, get them in your freezer so that anytime you have that kind of day, you know what kind of day I'm talking about, where you need the cozy comfort mm -hmm. soups. That yes. You can just pull them out, make them. A lot of these can go in your crock pot or they can heat up pretty quickly on the stove top. And so it just makes for a super, super easy Super meal. Oh, super. Sorry. <laughs> She's so funny. I'm the corny one. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. Every friend group needs one. Yesterday was that day for me. I had a busy day. So not only was it chilly and I needed something warm and cozy, but I had a busy day and I needed something in my crock pot because I wasn't going to be home at supper time and I would have hungry people at my house at supper time. And so I had beef and barley stew, which Ooh. I think we have shown people in a different video. Definitely. And you can go and look for that later. I think that might be in our winter freezer meals video, but I'm not totally sure. So maybe we'll figure it out. We'll figure and I'll it put out. it in the description below. But yes, and you, and you know, the recipe for that's on our website. And so beef and barley stew, nice winter, like mm -hmm. comforty. Totally, thing and, and just, it's thick and, and chunky it? and uh, and filling. It was delicious, and I, like I said, I was out of the house when supper time happened. But I got home. People had eaten. They were happy. They were fed. And then I got to have some, and poof, it's a good one. All right, we so have more good ones today. We have a lot of variety, actually. Mm -hmm. Like soup doesn't have to be boring. No, <laughs> no. Um. I don't know if you know this, Charlotte's a foodie. Food at Charlotte's house is never boring. Like, there's no boring food here. There's comfort no. food. Yeah, I mean, like, my kids love the tater tot casseroles and stuff like that, and that's a little boring. It, they love it, so we do it once in a while. Yeah. But in general, and like, if you came to visit, we would never serve you boring food, because that wouldn't happen. Um, even lunches here are not yeah. boring, That's when, true. even if it's just me. So uh, let's get into the soups and we will show you what I mean by not boring soups. You will love these. So I discovered this soup back, oh, forever ago. There is a cookbook called Getting You Through the Summer. It's by my favorite cookbook author, Sandy Richard. And it's this teeny tiny little cookbook. It's just this like mini one. It's the only one she has like that. And it's just meals where you don't have to heat your stove. Oh, so it's great like barbecue idea. Summer. and Get it. slow cooker and all of that. And so this is a slow cooker recipe from that book. Now I've adapted it over the years and then we adapted it again to make it freezer friendly. But that's where the inspiration comes from and she's got really really great recipes so this is not the first time that i've been inspired by a sandy richard recipe so for this tortellini soup you're gonna add to a large resealable freezer bag a chopped onion some pasta sauce garlic italian seasoning red pepper flakes some frozen mixed vegetables. Now you can use whatever variety you like. I'm a little, little bit limited because I have a broccoli allergy. So a lot of the mixed vegetable things out there in the frozen section are like in our stir fry based or include broccoli in some form. So I have to be careful. And so there's only really one <laughs> that I can use. It's like this California blend and it has peppers and green beans and mushrooms. So that's usually what I use, but you can use whatever frozen vegetables you want. And then you're gonna add some chicken broth and water to your bag. Now, you do have the option to leave those out. Write a note on the label that you're gonna add those on the day of cooking if you just want this to take up less space in your freezer. So you're gonna take out the excess air, 
you can um, seal it and freeze it. Now you also have the option that you could take your tortellini and put that in another bag, take the air out of that and staple it to this bag and freeze it because it does freeze just fine. You don't want it in the same bag, bag because you're gonna be adding it later on the day that you cook it. But if you wanna make sure that you have it in the house and you have everything you need, then you can also put the tortellini in a separate bag. On the day that you go to cook this, you're gonna thaw it, you're gonna put it in your slow cooker, uh, put the large bag contents in your slow cooker and just let that cook while you're out doing your thing. And then when you get home, you can toss that tortellini in there and give it a stir. When you serve it, you can serve it with some extra red chili or red pepper flakes if you like and a sprinkling of Parmesan cheese. That sounds delicious. It's pretty darn good. It is pretty darn and good. And it's nice and hearty because of the cheese tortellini. It is. And it's vegetarian if you use vegetable broth instead of chicken broth. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And this would be one that I would not need to have with a bun or a piece of bread or like, cause there is so much, it's okay. so hearty. So we, we have another soups video. We're gonna put the link to that right there. It's these like cozy winter soups. And in that video, Christy and I chat about how I don't feel like soups need an extra thing necessarily. Sometimes, right. yes, like if it's our Italian wedding soup and it's really brothy and like, then okay, I would have that with a sandwich or a bun or something. But Christy was talking about her need to always have a carb. There needs to be a carb with it. I don't care if it's a crostini, a little piece of garlic bread, um, a baking powder biscuit. And it doesn't matter. Sometimes just a slice of bread with some butter on it. It just adds to the filling up. So I'm not hungry later. I need that little extra carb. I don't know. With this one, there's it's loaded full of carbs, obviously, the, the <laughs> pasta. So I find that it's okay. But for me, soup, I have a hard time making soup a meal on its own without something extra. And it's very interesting. In the comments on that video, it was it was not completely split down the middle. I don't middle. think it was split down the middle. It was more to Christie's side for <laughs> sure. Yeah. But there were some people who were like, yeah, I'm fine. If soup is a meal. Soup can be, especially, you know, lunch or dinner, soup can be a meal. Like there were definitely people on my side. Um, <laughs> but the majority, I have to say, I have to, I'll admit, were kind of over there. Yeah, it's pretty common here. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and it's common here, like we're in Canada and you know, you go to a diner or most restaurants, I realize that they put the soup and sandwiches kind of close to each other on the menu because they're not entrees, they're, you know, they, they kind of go together. Yeah. Um, but they kind of go together. If it, I mean, sort soup of Soup and fair. salad, soup and sandwich. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's a starter. Or if you're me, it's, it's not an a meal. Your meal. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the next soup. Okay. <laughs> Curried butternut squash soup. This is one of the best soups that we have and it is kind of a special one because we don't make it often because butternut squash is a little bit of a chore to prepare sometimes. Well, compared to our meals that have very little prep and like in the tortellini soup, mm -hmm. you're throwing in frozen pre-cut vegetables. So that like there's not a lot of prep. This one has a little more prep. A little more prep. So you're going to take your butternut squash and a sweet potato. You want to peel them and seed your butternut squash and then cube them into one inch chunks. You will need some olive oil, some minced onion, minced garlic, minced ginger. Now we like the squeezy tube ginger here because it's always fresh. It's, you don't have to grate it. We go through enough freezer meals in our lives that we can use a whole one of these without it going bad. And we just like calling it squeezy tube. <laughs> and that's kind of true and you can't tell me that that's not true. It's true. And so we're going to also add some curry paste, some cumin, salt and pepper, and again with the chicken broth uh, or vegetable broth if you want to make this vegetarian, you can add it right into the bag at the time or you can save that tetra pack, that's what we call them in Canada, but it's four cups of your chicken broth. 
You can save that back for the day of cooking so you can leave a little more room in your freezer and then your bag won't be so thick. On the day of serving, you will add that chicken broth or vegetable broth as well as some water. We're gonna put this on the stove after it's been thawed, bring it to a boil and then you simmer it and you're going to let that sweet potato and your butternut squash soften and those flavors are going to melt. You're gonna remove it from the stove and let it cool a little bit and then with your immersion blender, you can just blend this until it is smooth and it is it warms you on the way down. Oh gosh, this is a good soup. This soup tastes like it's a cream-based soup. And there's not a drop there's of dairy. No. Yeah. It is so good. It, it's one of those ones where it just always makes me think, I get to have like restaurant quality food at home. Right? This reminds me of the carrot soup a little bit. And I yes. wonder what would it be like if we roasted the butternut squash and the sweet potatoes for, first. We should try oh, it sometime it to would... see if it gives it a flavor boost, right? I bet there's like Another, more depth More to depth it. to yeah. the flavor. Listen to us. Ooh. Depth of flavor. <laughs> But, but, but I'm you not wrong. think you're going to get that on a Freezer Meals cooking channel. <laughs> That's true. Freezer Meals aren't just casseroles, y'all. <laughs> um, there are a lot of soup Freezer Meals, though. You can freeze just about any kind of soup. And yeah, if this is your first time watching one of our videos, welcome. If Hello, it is, welcome. Um, we are neighbors and friends. Christy lives two doors that way. Um, and we've been doing freezer meals on our own for a couple of decades, but we've been doing them together for almost 12 years, we think. Yeah. Over 11. Over 11 years. And so we've gotten to be pretty good at this. And on our channel, you will find lots of really easy tips and ways to save money, time, but mostly this. Ooh, that headspace. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest comments our viewers give not just here but in our Facebook group is I can't believe how much easier my life is now that I know that I can just pull out a freezer meal in the morning and it's ready to go in the evening just cook it up there's less dishes there's less you don't have to think about it there's a sense of relief a bit of a sense of security and accomplishment that you have some oh, freezer yeah. meals in there and we want that for you we really really want that for you because you can do that too and get rid of that 4 p.m dinner dread where you're like oh what am i gonna make i didn't take anything out oh yeah like um, that's the worst part. we don't live like that anymore no um but we know what that feels like and we don't want that we don't want that for you no we do want you to experience the whole dinner freedom thing that we have freedom. and it's so great <laughs> I do remember the days of having to worry about what's for dinner and they occasionally still happen because we do very rarely, but we do run out of We do run meals. out. We ran or, out once in the pandemic. Yeah, that was a scary time because <laughs> you're like, we can't get toilet paper. Are we going to be able to find like yeah, ground like beef? Massive or, amounts of chicken. And, yeah, yeah, but we but, survived and we were really glad to have our freezer filled, weren't we? Oh, those We had just done it before that hit and yeah. so we had three months worth Again, if you if you don't know, we get together every three months and, and like make over 100, sometimes like 130, 150 freezer meals. We will put a link right there to one of those sessions so you can see how we really do this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we had just gotten together and done that like just the month, that month? That month. month. Yeah. And we had so, already planned it. We had the groceries yeah. and then... And it was before they hit, put restrictions and all of that. And so then we had three months both of us to you know of of meals to and last we us. went through them because we were home yes. the whole time with our whole families it was like man they eat every day they eat oh, so much goodness. food and like lunches and dinners I know. usually we're just worrying about dinners and like suddenly all the kids are home we had um i think we had six of our kids at that time five or six for sure that were doing online school Oh, Which was right? like, and then I work from home on the computer, and then my husband came to work from home on the computer. Oh, that's so right. we live in the country, so the internet was oh, an issue. We had to bump ours up. We don't have, yeah. we don't necessarily have unlimited internet because we're rural and we don't have really great service out here. It's getting better, but yes, those kinds of things. We had a Zoom beach party. Yes, do you remember we did. between our two houses because they hadn't said that you could ha have pods yet or yeah. or cohort or families. Cohort families is what we called them here in a in your bubble, and so we did. You should yeah. see if you could find pictures. I have pictures of that. 
I have, we decorated our house. We Charlotte, I have video. Of Charlotte that. was a homeschool mom, so she's like, "We're gonna, we're gonna paint fish. I'm gonna send you over some fish that you can paint." And we put them up in the background, and we decorated our houses. I'll send you my we, pictures. We did like the limbo, and yes. we had it was it was fun. virtual we did virtual supper club yes we did because of freezer meals yes we had between the two of us had four of the same meal so charlotte said you know it's my turn for supper club but would you mind if you still have these meals yeah so she went and delivered them and we each at home in our there's four couples each in our own homes cooked the same our, meal the same meal and then yeah. we sat on zoom together <laughs> the four of us couples and ate the same meal and it was the best we could do. It was okay. We made the best out of that situation, and right? And it makes memories. Oh, we have, yeah. And so. our supper club is booked for next Tuesday at a restaurant because in January, we go to a restaurant, not in our homes, so that we don't have to cook. So it resets. And it kind of resets. Although we've been not super into our schedule lately. Yeah. Life happens and it gets in the way, but we, yeah, it resets. So you're not stuck with March every year, you know, next year you get April, the year after that you get May. Yeah. So yeah, and we look forward to it. We love these people. If you're interested in our, we, we geek out over this because we love it so much and it's really added joy into our life and all of that. And so we have a video there. We have so many videos, um, but we have a video right there of like a 70s theme night that we did at our place for Supper Club, which was pretty recent, like just in the fall and um, super fun. We did use a few freezer meals, but mostly we're just showing you our fun costumes and all the really weird and somewhat gross food that we made. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of jellied salads and- It gave me an idea for my turn thing. in February though. Oh. Yes, and you are going to be surprised, and I don't really know if I'm going to pull it off, but I have a theme. I don't normally go with a theme. Lots Ooh. of people have a theme, but based on one of the things that you made, I oh. have decided on a theme. Ooh, and I'm curious now. We'll tell you about it after it happens. I'm so curious. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it off. Okay, well, I'm really curious. I'm interested. Yeah. So we'll we'll get back to you about that. And now we should get back to some soups. We have digressed and gone we on do a that rabbit sometimes. trail. Sorry. And we're sorry. No, we're not. We're not. But sorry. we're gonna give it you happens. more soup. <laughs> and the next one is going to be chicken taco soup. This is another one that is super hearty, and it's huge. It's a big soup. Like the bag. This is one that we definitely recommend that. You make with a friend. You, yeah, and, and that you add the tetra pack of broth on the day of because it is massive. The bag mm -hmm. is so thick. So this is a good one. Like we bring it sometimes if we're going on a ski trip and then put it in the crock pot and serve it, you know, after everybody gets in from skiing. It's a good one. Like if you're out tobogganing, all those things. Mm -hmm. But it's also good if you are serving a crowd. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You're into your bag. You're going to put three boneless, skinless chicken breasts, some onion that's been chopped, a can of chili style beans. And for that one, you just keep all of the sauce and everything. And then you're going to add some black beans that are drained and rinsed, some drained kernel corn, or you can use frozen corn. Uh, eight ounces of tomato sauce. I'm gonna put the recipe down in the description below so that you can get the exact amounts of everything. 
but um, then some diced tomatoes that are canned, a can of diced chilies, some taco seasoning, and then you're gonna add a can of beer and that helps to like tenderize the meat and all of that. This really does make it a better soup. You could use de-alcoholized beer, I think, but um, we just took a can from my fridge that my husband had left over from the holidays. So. <laughs> It's Obviously, he's not a huge drinker because they had been there for a while. <laughs> it's handy to have a can of beer around it's sometimes. It's handy to have a can of beer around. Um, at this point, your bag's getting pretty full, so you might want to enlist the help of somebody else to hold it open. Or you can use a juice jug, or you know, you can get those little bag holdery thingies, but we don't love them. So um, just use whatever. They slow us down. Whatever you want. Um, and then you're gonna get out the excess air from this. Now there's not a lot of air in there to get out because it is so full, but you're going to freeze it on the day you go to serve it. You are going to add uh, some chicken broth and you're going to put it either on your stove top or in your slow cooker. I always do it in my slow cooker. It gets that chicken so nice and tender and because you're gonna shred, shred the chicken. Yeah. yeah, it's really easy to shred. Now, if you want, you can top this with some tortilla strips, some mm -hmm. cheese, some sour cream. Like Maybe do that in the individual bowls yeah. when you're serving. I mean, you could put the blob of sour cream in the big one, but. No, I'd say top. Use Everybody do their own. The bowls. Yeah, yeah, that looks so pretty. You could even do some fresh cilantro. Like this mm -hmm. is a or some this chives, is one like that some... you can fancy up. Yeah, you can. This next recipe is kind of a new one around here. It is new to us anyway. It's called pizza soup, which sounds like it's a little bit weird, but trust me, it sounds delicious once I really go through it because um, it's pizza related. We're gonna start out with four ounces of sliced pepperoni and four slices of cooked bacon. See, it looks All good already. All these people are like, you had me a bacon. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need some garlic because what pizza soup wouldn't have garlic in it? Of mm -hmm. course it's gonna have garlic. You're going to add pizza sauce or if you're a club member, you can substitute with red sauce. It would be delicious in this. Oregano, some pepper, some diced green pepper and some minced onion. You're going to add three cups of beef broth. Now again, this is something that you might want to add at the end, like on the day of cooking, or you could add it right into your bag now and then it's your full meal deal. You're going to remove all the air out of the bag and zip it up. Then you're going to put a cup of shredded mozzarella into a medium sized bag. So it's a quart bag where the big bag is a gallon. You're going to zip it up and then when you staple them, you want to make sure you staple above the line to prevent leaks. We don't want holes in our bags, we just want holes in the top parts of the bags. <laughs> on the day of cooking, you know, you could do this in the slow cooker, you could do this on the stove top, but really you just want those flavors to meld more than anything. And then when you go to serve it, you can top it with croutons as well as your mozzarella cheese. It sounds really good. It really does. Do you know what else would go good on this? Everything bagel seasoning. <laughs> yeah. And I only say that because there is a place we have started to order pizza from Red Swan Pizza and they have sesame seeds on their crust. Hmm. And they have a lot of Indian flavors. So you can get paneer pizza, you can get butter chicken pizza. Interesting. Right? And we haven't done it yet because I'm there but my family isn't. <laughs> So I think next time I will get order one. I will, for I will you. order one for me, and then they will love it and eat it. Right. My husband would eat. And my husband order would eat some it. regular stuff. Some too. regular sounding yeah. pizza, like your pepperoni mushroom. You know. Yeah. Mushrooms would go in this. Mushrooms would go in that. Okay, this next one is actually so easy. You're not gonna believe how easy this is to put together. Like, make ten of them, because it would take you. It's true. Maybe uh five minutes to prep because you do have to slice some carrots and stuff so maybe five to ten minutes to prep if you were making ten <laughs> right, <laughs> a lot of carrots, right, that's right? A lot of carrots. but then when you're assembling these like five minutes and you could do ten it's pretty much a dump it's, recipe it's just yeah you just dump the things in the bag so into your large freezer bag you are going to put two chicken breasts 
two cups of carrots that are peeled and chopped, an onion. If you are not allergic to celery, you're gonna add some celery here, but we don't She's because allergic I'm allergic to celery. <laughs> to celery. Um, some garlic, thyme, a bay leaf, parsley, salt and pepper, and then you're gonna add some water and chicken broth. Again, you can leave those out, make a note on the bag and add them on the day of cooking, or you can add them now, depending on, I mean, you know your freezer. You know how much space you have. So this is a decision that we trust you to make. Then on the day of cooking, you're gonna just thaw this, put it into your crock pot, cook it on low. You're gonna take the chicken out and shred it, or um, I like, you know, I've got that like mix and masher thingy or mix and chop or whatever. Mix and chop. And so you can mm. put it right in there and chop it, sort of shred it in there with that. Or some people do it with scissors. There's like different ways to shred your chicken, right? Do you know what I would do? I would cut my chicken up before I put it in. Oh, you could totally do that. I but then cube chicken. Then there's more prep. There's sure. more prep, but we just, you know. It's a preference it. thing. Do nice. You do you. Freezer meals are customizable to you. That is why, yeah. that's why we love them. Because we do things differently for our own freezer meals and that's totally fine. Done is better than perfect, isn't it? 100% 100%. <laughs> Continue so, on, I will. Then you are going to add egg noodles. You're gonna add two cups of egg noodles right into your crock pot and they're going to just cook up in that last little bit after you add your shredded chicken back in there. And because of the egg noodles and the chicken broth and those seasonings and all of that, you get like the homemade chicken mm -hmm. soup, like chicken noodle soup flavor, but it took you minutes to make it. So easy. It's true. Our last soup is called hearty hamburger soup. We start out with a pound of ground beef that's been browned. We're going to add onion, garlic, some barley. You can use pearl barley or pot barley, whatever you prefer or whatever's on sale. Barley is cheap. It's not going to break the bank. You're going to add some carrots that have been peeled and diced, some frozen peas, some celery if that's your jam or not if you should not <laughs> some diced tomatoes some thyme parsley pepper a bay leaf and again with the beef broth you can decide to add it now so that it's complete or you can add the beef broth on the day of cooking so get all of these in your bag again it gets a little bit uh, full there with with the broth so you can get your friend to help or put it in the juice jug to help you out you can do this on the stovetop or in the crock pot and remove the bay leaf be before serving because if you are my husband, you will get it every single time. He has this bay leaf magnet. He has this <laughs> ability to, and it never fails. No matter it's, what it is. It's, no matter what it is, he gets the bay leaf. Maybe it's lucky. He is a lucky guy. <laughs> he is a, you know him. He is a yeah. lucky guy. And maybe it, maybe it's luck to get a bay leaf. We should, we should Google we that. We should Google that. <laughs> Is it lucky to get a bay leaf? Because he's the guy that gets it every time. The bay leaf magnet. I just think he's not that observant, but... <laughs> oh, that totally could maybe, be Maybe that's why I never get it, because I see it and I'm like, no, re-scoop. <laughs> no, I could just take you. it out then. Why don't I take it out? Why don't I take it out? Well, even the instructions say remove the bay leaf. I never think to take to it serving. out. Isn't that funny? I bet you he got it yesterday in that beef and barley stew. So him getting the bay leaf every single time reminded me of a story I read on Reddit. It is probably one of the funniest, uh, wholesome things that I've ever read on Reddit because it's not always a wholesome place. But this woman posted and she said, I've been married to my husband for nine years and our system for laundry is I wash and dry, he folds and puts away. We've been doing this for nine years. What he doesn't know is that every time I take the laundry out, I have the, the dryer sheet and I stick it in one of his pockets. And so every time he folds and puts away, he has started to realize that his pants or shirt or whatever are, is the only one that gets the dryer sheet. And he, is, he finally figured it out today. He caught me 
and the, the jig is up and for nine years she's been sticking this in there and he's getting mad how come this only happens to me and i'm just like that is the best most harmless prank you could play on your spouse like could it the be more holes in the dryer sheet? And finally he saw her and he's like, you. And she said, that's it, the jig is up. That's it. But I'm like, lady, you played the long con. That is brilliant and I love you. That's so, cute. Isn't that cute? So maybe I could just tell my husband I've been giving him the bay leaf on purpose. No, I won't. He really gets it on his own. I'll tell him it's lucky though. Yes, tell him yeah. it's lucky. He'll believe you. Yeah, he will. All right. Well, I really hope that you learned something today that you want to tackle some freezer meals on your own because we showed you it's pretty easy and we didn't point out, but you know, a lot of the ingredients in the chicken noodle soup and the hearty hamburger soup are the same. If you're going to mince an onion, just as easy to mince too. If a you're carrot. Gonna, a carrot, a carrot, you know, yeah. and like she said about making, make 10 chicken noodle soups. Well, then make five hearty hamburger soups, you're only increasing your prep by 50%, right? So, And if you can get the ingredients on sale, that's yeah. when you stock the freezer with the things. And so it's, it's really win-win. Yeah, that is exactly right. You mm -hmm. might as well do multiples. We shared six soups today. Mm -hmm. So if you made two of each, that's you would have 12, 12 meals. Soups. And really, you don't wanna eat soup every day. <laughs> No. Um, and so, I mean, if you're that person, again, don't let us tell you how to live. So you can if you want to, but most people don't want to eat soup every day. So those 12 soups will last you like a month or two. A month or two. They're good for th at least three months. And so. presumably you would make other things in between and you could do more freezer meals in between. Maybe Sunday is your prep day and you just do a week's worth or two weeks worth. Look at this, 12 soups. That's almost two weeks worth. So the next Sunday, you do another 10 or 12 meals. But not soups that time. But not soups that time. You get a wicked deal on ground sausage or ground beef. You know, it, it, there's a way to make it work for you. There's a way to work the sales. There's a way to make it cheaper and ultimately less pressure on you. Yes. And like we had said before, the whole, the, the whole brain thing. And having the, to think about it and yeah. having to make sure you have the groceries and having to make sure you're home on time and all the things, right? And you can do this. Sorry. You, yeah, you can do this. You can do this. We are going to put links in the description below for these recipes. So you can go and make these yourself. And Maybe this can be, if you're a soup person, you're sort of dipping your toe into the freezer meal world. Yes. And then when you discover how Come to the warm side. It is, <laughs> yes. The water's great. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We've converted so many people. It's great. And then you might decide you want to try, you know, some chicken marinades next. Ooh. Those are even easier. Yeah, they really are. And then you might decide, you know, um, we're not asking you to do the 150 freezer meals all at once. Don't start there. That's, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. But you know what? You can do this. And we were glad that you were here with us today and that you watched us and that you stuck with us because I know we can get a little chatty, but that's lot, okay. But that's okay. It's we're going to get to know video. us. We're awesome. We're lovely people. We're going to put a video right there for the other soups video because if you are like, a soup fanatic, then we've got you covered. It's true. <laughs> okay, we will see you again next time, okay? Happy cooking.